When it comes to creating your own custom 3D printed terrain, you probably think it's going to take a really long time, but these guys right here, eh, about 12 minutes each. Welcome everyone! If we haven't met before, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield, and thanks to the magic of default settings, I've got a quick and easy 3D printing tutorial here for creating your own scatter terrain for tabletop miniature war games. In this case, we're using a combination of an image editor like Photoshop or the GIMP and Blender, and you can crank these things out really fast. Well, design them is really fast. Slow 3D printing, that's not my problem. So let's dive into the project. To begin, I'm here in Photoshop. I've got a new blank image that's 2048 pixels by 2048 pixels with a black background. Now, even though I'm working in Photoshop for this particular tutorial, the GIMP can do pretty much everything you see here. Just the button ins and some other things are going to be a little bit different, but the basic process will work perfectly fine in that piece of software. What we're going to do is create an elevation map of your scattered terrain piece. And what that means is whatever the brightest pixel is, that's going to be the very top of your terrain piece, where the black here is going to represent the elevation of the rest of the battlefield. I'm going to use the brush tool here. I'm going to have a fairly large size of the brush as I have such a large image. And my hardness is set to zero so I get a nice big feather of my brush as I'm going out from the center to the very edge of the size. And finally, I need to change my color to be fully white. And I want to choose an opacity of 5%. And what I'm going to do is start drawing out the shape of my terrain piece on my image. One thing to make your life a little bit easier later on is you want to leave the very edge of your image black. As I'm painting out the shape here, you're going to see the image start to turn a little bit of a fuzzy gray color. And now to add additional layers of elevation, I'm just going to draw again on the image. And because of the opacity settings, it's each time I draw on the image, it's going to make it a little bit brighter. And therefore, the inner pieces of the scatter terrain piece are going to be higher than the outside parts. And of course, as I add more layers, I probably need to reduce the brush size to get more control. And I'm going to repeat this process until I'm satisfied with what I see here on the image. It will take some experimentation for you to grasp as to what you see here and how it translates to a 3D model. Once you're happy with what you've got here, save it out to a JPEG file in a location Blender can access. To continue on, we're over here in Blender. I need to actually delete everything that Blender puts in the default scene. So press B for box select. Select everything, X for delete, and then delete it. And we're going to add a new plane, so Shift A, choose Mesh Plane. And I'm going to press Tab to go into Edit Mode, and now you can see you've got four little vertices. Now that's obviously not enough data for us to display a cool looking terrain piece, so I need to do a subdivide operation. Right click, and in the context menu that comes up, choose Subdivide. And this will cause a little box in the lower left hand corner to appear. Click on the box. And what we're interested in is this field here. This is number of cuts. I'm going to change this to 120. However, the more cuts you add, the more detail your scatter train piece is going to be, but it's going to produce a larger STL file. So there is a little bit of a balance there. It's going to take some experimentation to figure out what works for you. Once I hit enter, oh, it looks like it limits me to a maximum of 100 cuts. Darn you, Blender. Now at this point you might be thinking, how big is my final terrain piece going to be? Well, we're going to deal with that in just a bit. Right now let's get Blender set up and we'll go from there. I'm going to press tab to exit out of edit mode. And now we're going to use something we don't normally use when it comes to 3D modeling for 3D printing, and that's textures. Textures are generally a really cool 3D animation thing, but for the most part they don't offer a lot for 3D modeling. But this is one cool exception. Over here in the right hand properties section, you want to choose this little checkerboard grid thing at the bottom. That is a texture dialog. And then choose the big gray new button. By default, we should have a type of image or movie. Click on open and locate and select the JPEG image you saved just a moment ago from your image editor. You're going to see the shape of your terrain piece loaded up right here in this black box. But right now, nothing has changed. I do want to note there's a whole lot of more properties when it comes to textures that Blender uses for applying them to models. For this particular tutorial, we can rely on nearly all the default options, so we don't got to mess with those and don't have to go down that detailed path. 
To make this texture do something, we've got to go to our modifiers properties, which is a little wrench icon over here on the right hand side. We're going to add a modifier called the displace modifier. So click add. Under deform, select displace. You might have seen your object jump a little bit. That is it reacting to the displacement modifier. But what we need to do is select the texture we just created. In the displace properties, click on the checkerboard grid right here. And there should only be one option, which is your texture. Select that. And already you've noticed, huh, that actually kind of looks like what you drew inside of your image editor. The other option we're interested in here is the strength modifier. Now, the higher this modifier is, the greater of difference there will be between the, what was the black pixels and your brightest pixels. So if I crank this really high up, you're going to get some crazy pillar-like thing. If I turn it way down, you get like a speed bump. It's up to you to decide what looks good to you. This step is all about setting the relative height of your terrain piece compared to its overall width and length. For me, I think 1.5 looks pretty good in this case. And then one more thing I'm going to do is add a second modifier. Right now when I zoom in here, you can see all the little squares that kind of represent those 100 or so pixel divisions we did earlier. And it, it, it could work, it kind of depends, it's up to you, it's whatever you like. But I'm going to smooth that out a little bit. And to do that, I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier. Once again, choose add modifier. This time, under Generate, choose Subdivision Surface. What that does is that kind of does some mathematical addition of vertices to your object and kind of smooths things out a little bit. Where it says Levels Viewport, I can turn this up to maybe 2, and that gives you a little bit more of a smoother terrain piece. Once again, you're making your final STL file even larger, which is going to be a larger file size, and it might cause some slices of choke and die. Just be aware of that. If I rotate around below the piece, what you can see from the bottom is you can look into it. So what this kind of looks like is maybe a vacuum formed terrain piece. But right now, as it currently stands, this is not 3D printable. We got to add a bit of solid material to it. To do that, I'm going to first apply both of our modifiers. To apply the modifiers, each modifier has a little down arrow right here. And then there's an option for apply. So we need to apply each of the modifiers and make sure you do it in order from top to bottom. If you don't, weird things are going to happen. So there we go. Now if I press tab with to go back to edit mode, you can see I've got a whole bunch of vertices and it more or less, <laughs> there's so many vertices, it's a solid mass, but you can see there are terrain pieces in place. To make this thing solid, I got to zoom into two of the corners and I need to select a couple of vertices on the edge such that they wrap around each of two opposite corners. The exact number of vertices doesn't matter, it just got to be two opposite corners. Then I can go up to select, select loops, and choose edge loop. And that should have selected the entire outside perimeter of your terrain piece. Next I'm going to press the letter E and then Z. And it's going to let me pull down essentially a new copy of all those vertices. And I can kind of create a bit of a base for your terrain piece. Now the exact depth of this doesn't matter a whole lot. It's going to get cut out later on. But what I need to do is make sure they're all on the same level. Because if I zoom in here, see how this is a little bit jagged right here? That's a side effect of my original image not having pure black pixels along the outside edge. But to fix that, I can press S for scale. Z for the Z axis and zero on your keyboard and then left click and now that area of the model is completely flat. Second to last step, press F for face and then if I jump back into solid mode you can see now I can't see up into the bottom of the terrain piece. And the final thing we need to do to get this terrain piece ready, I'm going to press A to select all my vertices and then shift N. Shift N is that wonderful magical Blender math thing for 3D printing. Don't worry about it. With that done, we can save our Blender file somewhere. You have two options right here for scaling it to this final size. I can either do that inside a Blender, or if you want to, you can do that inside of your slicer program, whatever you prefer. 
Here in Blender, I'm going to press the letter N, which will bring up my side menu over here. And you can see right now my dimensions are 2 meters by 2 meters by 0.676 meters. Now, Blender works at a different scale than 3D printing. And even though it says meters, that really refers to millimeters. So this thing is tiny. It's 2 millimeters by 2 millimeters. Let's imagine I want my terrain piece to be about... Let's go an inch and a half tall, which is around 35 to 40 millimeters. So I want to scale this thing up. So I'm going to zoom way out, press S for scale until the Z value here is, you know, around 35 to 40. All right, so we can export this model off to our slicer program. And the reason it's got a huge base, well, we'll cut that out inside the slicer program. Hopefully your slicer program does that. <laughs> Most of them do. So to export the STL file, let's choose export, STL file, export it out. And the key thing here is to choose the option selection only. It doesn't matter a whole lot with this because we only have one piece, but if you've got a more complex model, choose selection only. I have no idea why that's not the default option. So head over to your slicer program and bring your STL file into it. And to get rid of the base, what most slicer programs let you do is you can drop your model down below the 3D print base and it'll cut them off. So here in Kira, I can move my model down so that the entire square base is now cut off and I'm left with just the little kind of cool looking mountainy shaped thing. Slice your model however you want. And then when I jump over to layer view, you can see that all I've got is the hill portion and the entire base is cut off. And right there is pretty much the completion of this tutorial, at least the basic aspects of it. You can go ahead, use everything you learned here, start creating some basic hill shapes for 3D printing, print them off and paint them up and flock them as normal and you get all sorts of cool custom scattered terrain for your battlefield. And that is all you really need to begin the process of creating your own custom scatter terrain for tabletop wargaming. If you head back into your image editor and play around with different brush settings, you can create some really cool things. I've got this guy here, has a nice little defensive wall for your soldiers to hide behind. And that's just like I said, using a smaller brush, really layering things up. Also, you can try to play around with some shape dynamics, which is something that Photoshop has to kind of randomly change the shape in your brush, opacity, stuff like that on the fly. They can create some interesting things as well. And then on the Blender side, it has the ability to import existing STL files. And you can fairly easily, without too much more additional knowledge, merge those things in your train piece like you have here. I took an STL file from my old Judgment of Osiris set, which was like a um, Egyptian themed gladiatorial combat set. And I merged it in this terrain piece to make it look like the sands of the desert was overtaking this little spire, whatever it was way back when. So there you go. That should get you pretty well started on this process. Like I said, it's insanely fast and it's awesome to say you have your own custom 3D printed terrain. So once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. If you like these kind of videos, hit subscribe and that like button because I know I get a lot of good comments about people liking these Blender tutorials for tabletop gaming. So thank you guys all for watching and I'll see you next time.